You screw something together, and sure enough, one screw is missing. If I say, no problem, just print out the missing piece, it's no vision of the future, but exciting, everyday technology. Hello, and welcome to this edition of Newton. 3D printing, three-dimensional printing, has certainly become a reality. It could be pieces for the techno-hobbyist printing a little plastic wheel on his own printer. It could be art, or children's toys. And we wonder, will we be able to print houses? complete cars, or even food one day. The truth is, in medicine and industrial technology here in Austria, the 3D printer has taken on a very important role. I have 48 motors. I am only two months old. I got my legs in February. Most of my parts are 3D printed. Eighty percent of Roboy, the most human-like robot of our time, has been created in a 3D printer. Developed in Switzerland, printed in Austria. We wanted to make Roboy a reality in a very short time. We did not want to create an ugly-looking mechanical construction, but rather something with an appealing design. 3D printing enables us, independently from the manufacturing process, to design three-dimensional objects, generate an excellent geometrical surface and design, and have the finished product in front of us within two or three days. Here in a company in Dornburn, they're printing the hand for Roboy at the moment. The printing procedure is called laser sintering, in which they use a fine polyamide powder at a temperature of about 180 degrees Celsius. The laser melts the powder layer by layer. Depending on the laser's length of exposure time, it takes between a few seconds and a few minutes per layer. Besides plastics, this technology allows the printing of rubber as well. This is an excellent method if you need a functional sample or prototype in a very short time that comes with a very attractive price tag. It is all possible, from a key to a casing, a pair of sunglasses, there's no limit to your imagination. It takes three hours to print Roboy's hand, and another three hours to let it cool down in the printer. Then the finishing work can be done. The hand was printed in one piece. Up to now, this was impossible. The individual joints had to be assembled after they were produced. The 3D printer opens new dimensions in manufacturing. The joints function impeccably. To produce a successful piece like this hand, the planning has to be perfect. Computer-aided design, known as CAD, is the program they use here to design Roboy's head. The big advantage is that I can, directly from CAD and my computer, generate the building of the part, constructing it layer by layer, instead of having to make it out of a block of material. This method uses much less material because I only use what I really need to produce, a certain piece, and it's done in a very short time. The head for Roboy is printed with a different 3D printing method called stereolithography. The difference to laser sintering is that here we use a UV laser beam to harden an acrylic resin, which means the object we want to print is built from liquid resin. With this technology, it's possible to produce very exact transparent objects.
After watching some of the exciting printing, we meet Roboy at the University of Zurich, where he was developed. Hello, Newton team. I am Roboy. Hello, Roboy. During the greetings, Roboy is able to memorize the face of the person he meets. Two built-in cameras allow him to photograph people and run a face recognition when he meets them again. His anatomy mimics that of a human. He has artificial tendons and muscles. This gives him the ability to move in a relatively natural way. The skeleton was made entirely in the 3D printer. Not only does the anatomy of Roboy mimic humans, but his creation also reminds us of human beings. It took nine months. At this time, he is used as a study object to discover more about humanoid robots. In the long term, it is quite imaginable that a robot like this could work in the industry, taking over certain tasks, working directly together with humans. He could even take over tasks in care that are too difficult or cumbersome for humans. It's not only for high-tech projects, but also in the production of art that 3D printers are used. This musk ox is supposed to be reproduced. The 3D scanner makes it possible. First, the body of the ox is grid scanned and measured by a laser beam, creating a computer image of it. The result is an exact image of the outside, comparable to a black and white photograph. Here too, the 3D printer uses a layer by layer technique. The final product is created in the powder. All leftover material can be used again for the next print. The musk ox is a success, a perfect copy of the original. For artists, companies, and private individuals alike, the technology of 3D printing opens new dimensions in production. More and more prototypes will be printed first. This way, it is possible to test the functionality of a product and make adjustments before it goes into mass production. What is produced here with high-tech precision equipment, costing up to 300,000 euros, Technofreaks in Vöcklebruck in Upper Austria try to do with homemade 3D printers called RepRaps. In the open technology lab, called Otello, they print mainly objects for daily use. So, for example, there's a new clamp produced for a broken cupboard door. It's printed with a rep wrap, a bit of a wobbly contraption at first sight, with its home printed parts and five motors. What is really special about it? Within a day, one can build another printer of the same type, a complete reproduction. The clamp for the cupboard, done in just under an hour, and it fits perfectly. In the Otello, people don't just tinker around. The Austrians have definitive plans. One of our basic ideas is that the wider use of 3D printing at this time is hindered by two things. Firstly, it's too costly, and secondly, it's usability, how easy it is to use. For this, we have two strategies. One is the RepRap project, where people can build a printer for about 700 euros themselves, really bringing down the cost. However, this still involves a lot of time-consuming work for the individual. Our second strategy is to offer projects that open the way to all of this to young people. The members of the worldwide 3D printing community call themselves makers. The first 3D printer was made in the 1980s. 
Today, airplane and car manufacturers print out parts, even whole prototypes themselves, to ensure that the know-how doesn't leak to the outside. Irby is the first car where the entire chassis was printed on a 3D printer. U.S. citizen Cody Wilson made headlines when he printed parts for weapons and offered the building plans on the internet. In the land full of people who love their weapons, it was a controversial use of 3D printing that created a lot of excitement. Even edibles can now come from the 3D printer. The makers pull a veil of silence over the culinary value of these little cakes. Nothing edible, but liquids are created by the students of the Technical University of Vienna. These substances are needed for very specialized 3D printers. The printing happens in the microscopic nanotechnology lab. It takes two to three months until these chemical compounds are ready. After that, they have to undergo testing. Especially important, the mix must be degradable and changed during the printing process from liquid to solid state. The printing happens within the microscopic nanotechnology. The greatest challenge is the amount that should be produced. As an organic chemist, one is used to producing substances in measurements of 2 to 3 grams. For a complete fill of a 3D printer, 50 to 100 grams are needed. To deliver the printing material, a microscope slide carrying the liquid resin is used. The printer hardens the resin with a laser beam that's guided by a movable mirror. The accuracy lies in the range of less than 10 thousandths of a millimeter. Let's get it on, 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 on. The original is 137 meters high. The printed St. Stephen's Cathedral, here in front of us, is about as high as the thickness of a single hair. With the high precision of this two-photon lithography printer, Sculptures can be produced that are not visible to the eye, but can only be seen under a microscope. With the development of this high-tech printer, the Viennese set the world speed record for 3D printing and opened a new dimension for the use of this technology. Already, the researchers at the Technical University print cell structures. In a not-too-distant future, it should be possible to produce different tissue types with a 3D printer. This already works quite well for small bone defects, skin defects, and also for cartilage defects. In this area, it is already possible to offer viable solutions. In the next step, we will look at more complex tissue structures and their supply of nutrients. The final goal is to print entire organs. Werner Reichenfelser of the TU Vienna is working on 3D printing in the field of medicine as well. He develops exoskeletons and prints them at the institute. An argument for 3D printing in this field is the possibility to develop complicated parts quickly and print them within a few hours. Before the production of every part, they're constructed on the computer in exact detail. A construction plan for the three-dimensional print is prepared. Exoskeletons help people with physical disabilities to gain more freedom of movement. Should the prototype not fit, modifications can be made and printed again. In addition, it is possible that a technician can create parts that would not be possible or at least be very difficult to create with other manufacturing processes. Undercut edges and shapes that can only be produced with casting techniques. 
Here, the 3D printer is an enormous help for the designer. This exoskeleton is undergoing tests at a care home in Italy at the moment, and with much success. There's a plan to use it for quadriplegics and those in advanced stages of illnesses affecting the nervous system, such as multiple sclerosis. When it comes to 3D printing, some people are talking about a new industrial revolution. Others, however, think more along the lines of product piracy. So what is it really about? Can we just print whatever we want? And what about copyright and patent protection? Printing is going on, ostensibly without any borders or restrictions. Open source platforms such as Thingiverse make it possible. Here, anyone who has a 3D printer can download complete sets of blueprints, even CAD files, and all of it for free. Not just jewelry and accessories, but also blueprints for a variety of spare parts are on offer, put there by the makers. People like Peter Purgatoffer from the IT Institute of the TU Vienna. He has designed a letter opener, and he offers the blueprint on Thingiverse. For daily use, 3D printers will have a breakthrough in the next few years, but they won't be able to preform like the industrial printers. There will be a range for home use, for smaller things, and there will be a large industrial 3D printers that will revolutionize the manufacturing process. The printing takes only 17 minutes. Moments later, the letter opener is ready to be used. As soon as the blueprints for such products are available on the internet, it's mostly allowed to print them. The legal profession, however, talks about a gray area. We will need a fundamental set of industrial property rights since this form of production has no legal protection at all. The lawmakers have not considered the possibility that the end user is able to print products at home and with that violate third-party property rights. The use of a three-dimensional printer is only allowed if there is no patent registered for the product. In certain circumstances, existing copyrights can be enforced as well. If I have a part in a protected design category and the appearance is in any form characteristic and there was a certain amount of intellectual effort necessary to create it, I am protected and it is not allowed to be reproduced. We found ourselves faced by a similar problem in the early 90s, with a CD entering the music industry. Every CD could be copied and burned. Digital copyright was not able to stop pirate copies being made. Still today, every store-bought CD is on average copied 2.5 times for the black market. The uncontrolled growth there is a result of the fact that the technical revolution grew continuously, but the law could not come up with the right answers to the exchange markets. Should we miss the boat in the development of 3D printing, we will end up in a similar situation. Therefore, it is vital that future-oriented solutions are found that enable 3D printing, but at the same time enable designers and inventors to be able to get paid. Peter Purgatoffer developed most of the blueprints for his printing orders himself. The showpiece of his collection is a puzzle, Europe to be touched. In the 50s and 60s, people asked themselves if there would ever be anyone who wanted a computer at home and what use that could have. Today, it's almost impossible not to have a computer. I see similar development to the 3D printer. 3D printing opens new perspectives for the future. Could this mean that mass production in low-wage countries could return to their places of origin? Through regionally offered printing services, the printing could be done where the product is needed. If this is locally produced, transport and delivery can be eliminated. 
This means we have the expensive process of printing ourselves, but can forget about all the logistics and any related problems. Online suppliers offer products that are completely printed and sent to the buyer. Does the future of production maybe lie in 3D printing? At this time, technology is not far enough advanced that we could already speak of an industrial revolution. But if the development keeps advancing, the production process will drastically change from the producer to the consumer. This will also bring a major change in the world of employment. International production sites will change. And most of all, we will have the possibility to bring new products to the market very quickly. Even the Moon is considered to be a production site. The European Space Agency, ESA, plans to establish a printed space station. A six-meter-wide printer is already being tested here on Earth. It's supposed to be transported onto the Moon, where it will print the individual modules made from moon rock. For now, however, 3D printers are best used for the production of prototypes, like Roboy. I can be tired and go to sleep. Well, maybe quite soon Roboy will stand here, in my place, in this studio. But a Newton presenter out of a 3D printer? I'm not so sure I like to think about this as a model for the future. If you'd like to get into the business of 3D printing yourself, for a device like that, you'll need to fork out about two to three thousand euros. I look forward to welcoming you again. Until then, goodbye.